What's up guys? Today, we're gonna find out who makes the best engine degreaser. So guys, as far as the products that I'm testing in this video, um, these are all the products that I had available local to me. The prices that I'm gonna quote in this video are the prices that I paid for them locally. So obviously, your availability and what you guys are gonna pay may vary slightly, but like I said, this is what I had around. So as far as how I'm gonna do my testing, um, if you guys watch my brake clean testing video, this is actually the exact same stuff I used in that video. So what this stuff is, this is used motor oil, used transmission fluid, used gear oil, used power steering fluid, uh, used brake fluid, with uh, grease added in for thickness, as well as some anti-seize, um, just to you know, make it a little bit even more nasty. So this is pretty much every product um, as far as you know, oil that you're gonna find in a car, um, all mixed together in like a slurry with a bunch of grease added in for thickness. So this is what I'm gonna use for my dirt testing. Um, the way I'm gonna conduct my dirt testing is I have a metal panel that I stripped it down, sandblasted it, and then what I did was I spray painted it bright yellow. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint that, the surface of that test panel with that dirt. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take each product and I'm going to spray it on the panel. I'm gonna thoroughly saturate the panel. I'm gonna let the panel sit for two and a half minutes with the product on the panel to let it you know, kind of sit there and work. After two and a half minutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a soft bristle brush and sort of agitate it a little bit and then let it sit for another two and a half minutes. Um, I understand some of these products say you need to let them sit for 10 minutes on the surface. Other ones say you gotta let them sit for two minutes. So what I did was I used five minutes for all of them just to kind of get you know the, the same amount of time has transpired so we can do a good you know A, B comparison. After the panel's been agitated and it has sat for another two and a half minutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a garden hose on like a mist setting and then just lightly spray off the, the panel and then whatever's left, we'll be able to get a real good visual representation as to what cleaned the best and what cleaned the worst. As far as some of the other testing that I'm gonna be running here, um, we're gonna test compatibility with paint as well as compatibility with aluminum. Does it make aluminum corrode? And as well as does it degrade rubber? So we're gonna test all three of those things in addition to its dirt removal performance. So as far as how I'm gonna conduct uh, each one of those tests, the, the paint test, I have a panel that's probably close to about two and a half feet long. I divided it into sections. Each section got sprayed with a different product and then we're gonna see how the paint held up after 24 hours of being exposed to each one of these cleaners. The aluminum and the rubber exposure, I'm gonna do the exact same way. So what I did was I got some containers I filled them up. One has aluminum in it, the other one has rubber in it. I'm gonna let it sit 24 hours and basically you know, see does it corrode aluminum and does it degrade rubber. So I understand if you guys are gonna use any of these products, you're not gonna let it sit on the surface for 24 hours. But what I'm trying to figure out here is if there's any long-term side effects to using any one of these products on paint, aluminum, or rubber parts underneath the hood. So uh, that's why I ran things for 24 hours rather than you know an hour, just because in an hour you're probably not gonna see any change, but if you were to use this stuff multiple times throughout the course of many, many years, we're gonna test and see, does it corrode aluminum? Does it destroy paint? Does it destroy rubber? We'll find out. So coming in seventh place is gonna be the CRC Pro Strength Degreaser. Um, this stuff, foamed really, really well. It stuck on the surface for a long period of time, which would be great for you know vertical surfaces and things like that where you want the product to stay. Um, unfortunately, it really didn't do that good of a job cleaning um, the dirt off of the test panel. As far as the aluminum and the rubber were concerned, um, there was a considerable amount of corrosion that had started on the aluminum. It sort of, sort of uh, started turning black. It was weird though, because you can kind of wipe it off with your finger, but it's definitely um, not the same way that it was when I put it in that little test jar. As far as the rubber, didn't affect the rubber whatsoever. Um, as far as the paint, 
It caused the paint to wrinkle. At the end of the day, all this stuff to me really did was uh, corrode some aluminum, destroy some paint, and uh, leave a bunch of dirt still on the surface. So for $7.50, yeah, don't waste your money on this stuff. So in sixth place is gonna be the Walmart Supertech. Um, this stuff cleaned a little bit better than the CRC. It's a foaming cleaner, just like the uh, CRC is, um, but at $2.47 a can, it is a heck of a lot cheaper than what the CRC is, and it cleaned about as much as the CRC did. As far as the results that I got from the aluminum, the rubber, and the paint, um, it was very similar to the CRC. So the corrosion on the aluminum was very, very, very similar, maybe a little bit worse on the, uh, the Walmart brand. It didn't do anything to the rubber. Um, as far as the paint, again, it wrinkled the paint just like the, uh, the CRC did. At $2.47 a can, it is pretty cheap. It's the cheapest thing I tested, but uh, as far as dirt removability, it's not all that great. So yeah, it's better than the CRC just based on the fact that, you know what, it's cheaper. So in fifth place is gonna be the Gunk Foam. The Gunk Foam did a really good job as far as cleaning compared to the other foaming cleaners that I tested. Um, this one by far cleaned the best. But then again, when you compare it to some of the stuff that's coming up, it really didn't clean all that well. Um, as far as what it did to the aluminum, the rubber, and the paint, again, it corroded the aluminum, didn't do anything to the rubber, and the paint started to wrinkle. Um, this stuff is $5.49 a can, so it's double the money of the Walmart brand, but it does clean a little bit better, so you know, take that for what it is. And as far as these foaming cleaners, this is the best one that I have found because uh, the other two that I tested really weren't all that great. Personally, after having used all these foaming cleaners, I think it's just marketing. Um, I, don't, I don't see any benefit to the foam other than the, than the fact that it clings to the surface and stays there, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't get it any cleaner. So in fourth place is gonna be the O'Reilly's engine degreaser. Um, this stuff cleaned the panel extremely well. Um, there wasn't hardly any dirt left on the panel by the time I had rinsed it off. It did, like I said, an excellent job actually cleaning. A um, Couple things that I did notice about this product was, first of all, it has acetone in it, and acetone is something you do not want to get on your paint. So the results from my paint testing were you know, not very good. It wrinkled the paint just like the other foaming cleaners that you know, we just talked about. Um, with that said, it didn't do anything at all to the aluminum but it did start to break down the rubber. Um, I'm sure it would take a much longer period of time for me to see any you know, real change in the rubber, just feeling it, it felt exactly the same, but the cleaner inside the container was not the same color as what it was when I put it in there 24 hours prior. So it was definitely eating into the rubber a little bit. Cleans well, stinks to high heaven. Um, it really smells like kerosene and reeks of kerosene but uh, it does clean well. Third place, I'm gonna give to the AutoZone engine degreaser. Um, this stuff, I'm like 99% sure that this is the exact same stuff as the O'Reilly's. It's just got a different label on the can. Um, smells the same, had the same reaction with the rubber and the paint. And uh, again, it's, it's listed on the back of the can that it has acetone in it. Um, just taking a look at the top of the can, they have a similar code up here on the top as far as you know the manufacturer code, so I'm sure they come out of the same plant. As far as one being better than the other, it's really a toss up to me, guys. Um, I don't know that I really prefer one over the other. The reason that I ranked this higher than the O'Reilly's is I felt like this had a slightly better reaction with the aluminum than what the O'Reilly's did. The O'Reilly's had a couple little specks of uh, black in that aluminum, and this didn't have any at all. So, you know, take that for what it is. But as far as their performance, how they clean, how they smell, they're extremely similar. They're even the same price at $2.99. So pick whatever store is closer to you. In second place, I'm gonna have to give it to the OG Gunk Degreaser. This stuff did an excellent job. 
Um, realistically, I don't think you're gonna find a better product for cleaning your engine than this because it cleaned the, the test panel completely. It didn't react with the aluminum. It didn't react with the rubber and it didn't react with the paint. So to me, that's about as good as it gets. Um, the reason I rank this in second place is because the next one coming up performed just as well and did it for cheaper. So this is $5.49 a can. Uh, the one coming up is $2.99 a can. So again, great stuff, highly recommend it. Um, again, stinks to high heaven. I think um, some of the main ingredients in this stuff compared to the AutoZone and the O'Reilly's, this is using kerosene and number two diesel fuel, actually off-road diesel if you look at it because it has a red tint to it. So uh, rather than acetone, they're using diesel fuel. So take that for what it is, but guys, it works well. In first place is gonna be the Motor Medic Heavy Duty Engine Degreaser. This stuff did just as well as the gunk as far as the dirt removal, how it reacted with the aluminum, the rubber, and the paint. I didn't have any adverse effects to you know any of those, the aluminum, rubber, or paint, and it cleaned the test panel completely. So what sealed the deal for me with this stuff was the price. It is uh, $2.99 a can, and it's quite a bit cheaper than the gunk. And in my eyes, from everything that I saw and everything that I tested, it performs just as well. Um, again, as far as the ingredients in this stuff, they literally list on the back of the can, number two diesel fuel and kerosene are the first two ingredients. So guys, I'm sure at the end of the day, if you got some number two diesel fuel and some kerosene, you could probably get pretty similar results to what I got with some of these cleaners. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing is, if you use that stuff, you know it's not gonna react with your paint, it's not gonna degrade your rubber, it's not gonna affect the aluminum, and it's gonna clean well. So at the end of the day, if you guys wanna make your own cleaner, kerosene, diesel fuel, mix them together. As far as what the proportion is in this can, I couldn't tell you, but uh, obviously it cleans really, really well. So guys, I will have links down in the description to some of the cleaners that I had in this video if you guys wanna pick any of this stuff up. Um, but yeah, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.